Good afternoon, everyone, or good morning, if you're reading this tomorrow. Now, in the last lesson, uh, we looked at the three methods used by the Nazis to keep control over Germany, at the massive rallies, at the monstrously effective propaganda machine led by Joseph Goebbels, and finally, at the brute force of the Nazi repressive apparatus, what we call the police state, with uh, military units and police units like the Gestapo and, uh, and the SS, essentially making sure that nobody had any sort of independent idea. Today, we will see what the Nazis actually wanted to achieve. Because unlike other soft dictatorship, the Nazis had a thorough plan to change, the Germ to change the German state and the German society in order to achieve what they believe would be the perfect state for the German people. To do that, we're going to look at the following um, four things. First, at what does totalitarian mean? Then, at a strong Germany, at the three aims of Germany, uh, of the Nazis, which were to make Germany strong again, to make Germany racially pure, and to create the folk, a people's community. Now, uh, it all sounds pretty harmless, but we'll get into that. Now, what is totalitarianism and what were the aims of the Nazis? All modern governments try to change societies, uh, whether they like it or not, whether they do it intentionally or not, but in one way or another they do. But very few of them have tried that uh, to the same extent as the Nazis. A normal government, like the British government, will tell you what you cannot do or occasionally what you should and must do. Citizens in Britain, for example, are expected to pay the taxes, or maybe in other countries, serve in the military during times of crisis. Those are things citizens must do. Now, uh, they are also expected, citizens in democratic countries, not to commit crimes against either other citizens or the government. Those are things citizens must not do. And they generally outnumber the things citizens must do. You will um, more often find the police telling you that you shouldn't do something, rather than forcing you to do something. This is the difference between totalitarianism and one of the many, many differences between totalitarianism and democracy. Totalitarian states are those states that not only tell you what you must and must not do, they also tell you who you must be. To be a proper German citizen in Nazi Germany, one needed to be Aryan, okay? One needed to be something. You needed to be Aryan, to conform to certain ideas of genetic purity, to be 100% German, whatever that means. You also needed to take part in collective ceremonies in the rallies. If you didn't do, why did you not do that? Do you hate Germany? Do you hate your fatherland? And you were also expected to follow the rules of the party, the rules set up by the Nazis, in every single aspect of the private and public lives. For us, it's hell. Okay, clearly uh, having uh, the government inside your house at all times telling you not only what you must do or what you must not do, but also what you must be, it's absolute hell. For the Nazis, it was the future. It was what they had in mind for Germany. This is what we call a totalitarian regime, a dictatorship that not only cracks on to dissenters very, very harshly, but also attempts to totally control, total again is the, is the key word, to totally control every single aspect of a population's life. Totalitarian states include, of course, Nazi Germany, but also the Soviet Union under Stalin and even later on, and to a certain extent, even modern China with its mass surveillance system and with its emphasis on being culturally Chinese in order to be proper members of the state. Now, these states are not merely repressive, okay? People are not just punished harshly when they do something wrong, no. These states actively try to change who people are in order to make the state itself stronger. Does that make sense? Now, this generally ends up costing millions of lives, of course, because as you might have learned, people are different and try to change this simple assumption and create a forced unity and uniformity based on a certain idea of how society must be will invariably lead to a catastrophe. Millions will die in one way or another. 
And this is exactly what happened with the Nazis. So what were the aims of the Nazis? We can find three of them. First, they wanted to make Germany strong. They wanted to avenge the defeat of World War I. Second, they also wanted to make the country racially pure by sidelining or straight out killing minorities or the so-called undesirables. Also, they wanted to create absolute loyalty to the Nazi party, which saw itself as the one and only possible expression of the German people. If you were German but not a Nazi, then you were not German, you were a traitor. Because why would you go against the government? The government is the state, the government is the country. If you say something against the government, you are a traitor. And traitors, as everybody knows, are punished by death. Not uh, condoning this, I'm just trying to explain how these people were thinking, what they wanted to achieve. Now, so, let's dig into these three aims and see how they were achieved. I will read pieces from a textbook because I believe, uh, well, it's tried and tested and uh, it makes sense. So, let's look at the, sh the first one, the first aim, a strong Germany. The Nazis believed that many of Germany's problems had been caused by the weak leadership of the Weimar period. And we looked at this uh, in the past few weeks, remember? Looking at the weakness of the Weimar government, they did have a point. The Weimar constitution was uh, created uh, in order to create a certain kind of state which was not what Germany needed in that particular kind time of its history. So. They wanted Germany to be strong again. They wanted a government strong enough to overturn the Treaty of Versailles. Remember, the Treaty of Versailles was the peace that humiliated Germany after World War I. They wanted a strong army to make Germany once again the great military power it had been before the war, and a strong, thriving economy to restore prosperity of the German people after the helplessness of the Depression. Remember the 1929 Depression that destroyed the German economy. Now, how would they achieve this aim? A strong Germany needed a forceful and decisive lead leader. Within days of his appointment as a Chancellor, even before the Enabling Act had passed, the Enabling ha Act uh, was when um, the President, President Hindenburg gave Hitler special powers under Article 48 so that he could essentially do whatever he wanted with the state, and he did. So even before the Enabling Act had been passed, Hitler met with the army uh, with the army leaders to tell them of his plans to rearm Germany and to beat France if necessary. The humiliation of the Treaty of Versailles was to be laid aside. As far as the German economy was concerned, the Nazis wanted to make industries as powerful as they had been before the war. So, uh, an economic politic policy, the way uh, Hitler wanted to organize the economy of the state, which had a clear political goal. Political goal is killing France, avenging the humiliation. Intense stuff here. Now, second aim, a racially pure Germany. And this is where things get bad. Now, Hitler believed that the so-called Aryan people, blonde, blue-eyed Germans, I'm sure you know a few, were superior to other races. He believed that many of Germany's past problems had been created because Germany was not run by racially pure Aryans. Remember, we discussed it, uh, we said that uh, Hitler had this sort of uh, conspiracy theory that Germany had been betrayed by those damn Jews, he said. And uh, this eventually influenced his policies in terrifying ways. How did he do that? Uh, now, from the earliest days, Hitler had advanced racist policies. Now the Nazis wanted to create a racially pure Germany. And how do you do that, you ask? Now, um, how did they achieve this aim? They wanted first to get rid of all racial minorities, Jew, uh, including, of course, the Jews, which we mentioned already, but also the Slavs. Remember, Germany at the time still had large areas in which a lot of population of Polish origin, of Slavic origins lived. Most of these people, if they could not prove to be racially, genetically German, like uh, you speak German, uh, it's not enough. Uh, you need to prove that your great-great-grandfather was German. Otherwise, you're a Slav, you're an inferior citizen, 
and either you die or you go into forced labor camps. Okay. They would also uh, get rid of other people who had undesirable qualities. What were undesirable qualities in the eyes of the Nazis? Homosexuality, uh, any form of physical or mental disabilities. They even created uh, clinics, um, like small uh, ambulances, like uh, vehicles that ran around picked up uh, disabled children and killed them because they were disabled mentally or physically and this could not be accepted in the pure state in the pure country the germans wanted to be creating also uh, to create a racially pure germany uh, it required a particular contribution from german women they must consider it their highest duty to have as many racially pure children as possible they should be prevented from marrying men of other races. So German women only allowed to marry Germans. But most importantly, the Nazis, not most importantly, but also importantly, the Nazis did not want women to work for a living, but they believed that it was the national duty to have children and look after the families. Women were baby factories. You stay home, take care of the house, make baby for the fatherland. What will happen to these babies? These babies will become happy workers and happy soldiers in the armies of the Reich. So if you're a woman uh, in Germany in the 1930s, be resigned to just be a baby maker for the rest of your life. They even gave them uh, medals to show that those mothers had made a lot of babies because women were not allowed to do anything else. Third aim, creating the folk or uh, the folk. Speak German or the people's community. Now, the Nazis wanted all racially pure Germans, again in a thousand of air quotes, to feel that they were part of the folk or the people's community. In the folk, people would see their own lives as less important than their contribution to Germany itself. In the folk, individual liberties, such as the right to think differently from others, would be less valued than loyalty to the German people, to Hitler, and to Germany. They sum this up in the phrase Volk, Führer und Vaterland. People, leader and fatherland. And uh, yes, it, it's exactly what we said. The Nazi party said, you know what? We are the only legitimate representatives of the German people. If you have ideas that are different from ours, you don't agree with the German people. Therefore, you are a traitor. You're not German. You are an enemy of the country. And that's scary stuff. Sorry for editorial or editorializing, but talking about Nazi Germany is kind of depressing. Now, how would they create it? How would, would they achieve this terrifying aim of a one-party state? To create this people's community, all other claims on people's loyalties were to be removed. You're a Catholic, you're a Protestant, not anymore. You're a German, and you must be loyal not to Jesus Christ or to your church, but to us. So organizations such as churches, political parties, or even swimming clubs or choirs, which might di divert people's attention away from serving the people of Germany, led by the Nazis, would have been dissolved or taken over by the party. Even an uh, interesting thing, the German, the German Nazi party actually created its own Christian church, tried to turn Hitler into some sort of saint figure, like a religious saint. Now, even family loyalties would take second place. The folk was first. The Führer, Hitler, wanted to win the hearts and minds of German people. There would be no room for free speech. Free speech was illegal speech, okay? Criticizing the government would be criticizing the country, criticizing the people, and therefore being a traitor. Even everyday conversations between friends should be controlled because the Nazis wanted to ensure that the ideas opposed to Nazism were all banished. Now, to sum it up, so those were the three aims, create a strong Germany, a racially pure Germany, and uh, a folk, okay, a people's community that was ruled entirely by the Nazi government. Now, uh, so those were the facts. Now I would like you to answer this question. What were the aims of the Nazi party? 
read the transcript again, try to understand what the Nazis wanted and how they tried to achieve it. Answer in the Google form, as always. And if you have any questions or comments, please drop me an email.